going on, fam? Welcome back to another great episode of Our Smooth Club, the show where everyday men discuss everyday topics. I'm Arrington Gavin, and alongside me and my bros, I have Mr. Donnell Britt, Dapper Luke, and Mr. Jonathan Jones. Gentlemen, how's everyone doing this evening? Good, man. Great, great. That's yeah. awesome. Everybody looks good, man. I love the look. Dap, I love the I pants that plaid. Okay. I, I gotta I step my game with I'm telling you, <laughs> I forgot. You can't have a name like Dapper. It's, coming it's true. Right That's true. That's true. That's true. I gotta rep the brand. <laughs> <laughs> well, little fellas, look. I want to open the start the start the first topic of the show. Um, really, I'm, I'm talking with uh, Luke about. I think there's a trend where there's a lot of boys becoming fathers before they're becoming men, and I remember on the last episode how we were talking about, hey, how, you know, is it come from how they're raised? Where, you know, is it the, the lack of conversation maybe parents might not have with their kids, with the birds and the bees? So, like, what, you know, what, what's going on? So, I just wanted to kind of open, you know, not and not to criticize no, anybody, but again, just want to learn and, you know, what do you think about that, fellas? Anybody can start. I mean, I, I'll start. I, I 100% was raising a child and wasn't a man. I, mm-hmm. I had no idea what I was doing. I mean, I had a child at the age of 20 years old, but you know, I was in the military for about two years, but I didn't, I really didn't know what I was doing. So mm-hmm. I believe that. And, but I, I'm not saying it was a bad thing. Mm-hmm. It just, I wasn't raised by my father. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, <clears throat> I was new into the world. All I knew is what I saw on the streets. So, mm-hmm. you know, what I saw on TV and there was a lot of trial and error, mm-hmm. you know, especially with my first son. Now, you know, mm-hmm. by now I got it right. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I, I do believe that happens a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the things for me, and I think this rings true for not just men, also women, mm-hmm. right? I think a man's presence, an older man, is definitely necessary within a home. For me, and we talked about this on a previous episode, you know, it's it's not uh, far too often we think of the man as disciplinarian. That's all he does is discipline the child. But we also need, you know, his guidance, his strength, you know, how does he react to situations? So I think for me, you know, kind of like Donnell, I had my first son when I was, you know, 21. And there was just things that I just did not know because I did not have the experience. I, you know, it's not until the child is here that, oh, you know, what do I do this with a situation? So I would call my mother, I would call my uncles and I would ask questions because now, you know, I have this question because this is happening to me now. Mm-hmm. So, you know, with anything, you know, even if you necessarily don't have the experience, but you have that, you know, support system. That, that village that you can reach out to and get information. I think that's good, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. if you have it, I think that's really good. That's awesome. That's what, do you, what do you think, JJ? I know personally because I don't have kids. You don't have kids. <laughs> no, we don't have kids. No kids. But we know some people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know a couple. That's what I was about to say. So, like, I've noticed, like, a lot of them were younger. So, like, that was just one thing I was like, I know for damn sure I ain't ready. <laughs> and, but, like, the ones who had them when they were younger, like, most of my friends have had like good like, family support mm-hmm. that like really helped them, which and like the kids are living a good life. Like, and that's the main thing. I mean, the support system. I could, I, you know, I I could imagine because there's families out there. Hey, they might not have the support system. And they're like, oh my gosh, what do, what do I do? So I mean, you know, I I commend them for you know working hard, raising a good kid. Because I know plenty. I know a, a few of my buddies that had um you know that had kids and it was rough but i mean i you know i say hey look i'm your bro man if you need anything i can you know i'll buy some of the clothes for him or something like you know something to kind of mm-hmm. uplift them mm-hmm. in you know because at the end of the day you know if it's not planned they're they're anxious they're nervous they're like oh my yeah, gosh yeah, what's, yeah. The, what's what's my plan i haven't even finished school yet i haven't done this yet i haven't i don't even know what my degree is you know gonna be or something like that so it's um it's a lot but i just want to kind of bring that up fellas because for oh yeah and i was gonna say the one of the things kind of going on the line i think you were you were just traveling down one of the things the big misconceptions of children is when I have a child, I want to give my child what I did not have, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And that a lot of times it comes in the form of material items. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know for me, you know, I bought my son's dirt bikes. I bought them, you know, Nikes. I just, I thought that's what I needed to be giving them. And right, mm-hmm. that's really not what I needed to be giving them, right? <laughs> <laughs> children need, you know, support, stability, you know, and someone that's going to teach them, yeah. right? The material items are nice, but they're definitely not necessary. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, all I, and I, I tell my kids all the time, right? My kids would be like, you know, dad, I need some new shoes. Like, do you need new shoes or do you want <laughs> new shoes, right? right? You know, I'm like, all you need is clothes on your back, a roof over your head, and food. Mm-hmm. You don't need the newest Jordans. You know what I'm saying? You don't need those. <laughs> you want those, but you don't need those. So, um, yeah, definitely, uh, I think, you know, as we, and I'm sure you gentlemen, once you start to have, you're, you're going to be a little older mm-hmm. when, you, when you have your children. Like you said, you see people that have had, you know, younger than you. And I just simply say that, yes, 
give your children what they need, <laughs> not always what they want, you know, because they're going to want a lot, you know, and, you know, you just kind of being strong willed understanding, you know, but some things, you know, you want to like, I know my children, that's my youngest son. He's like a scholar. Mm-hmm. You know, so I want to give him a lot because he's doing what he's supposed he's to be doing. Hard, you, gotta, you, know, you know what I'm rewarded. saying? You don't just want to discipline them. Also, you know, when they're doing well, treat them, you mm-hmm. know, so they continue to do well. And mm-hmm. those are the things, like I said, you just kind of learn, you know, as you're in it, you know? Yeah. yeah I was told uh, one time the kid needs your present presence that presence mm-hmm, right mm-hmm, and say so it kind of worked because i did the same thing man. i wanted to jordan so you know you buy your kid everything whatever yeah. baby you i mean and coming up but but you learn that ultimately we got to learn as men to be that emotional person and, mm-hmm. and being able to talk to our sons and our daughter mm-hmm. because i got a daughter and i i want to let her know that you don't got to go do nothing with nobody you can talk to daddy daddy can help you out i want to be in her life because a lot of times when you when we get with women that's what they talk about their childhood and not having a father, mm-hmm. right? Or not having their father present at all times. Like he might've came and gave us some money, but they really wanted a relationship with their father. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think about all those things that was told to me from different women I've talked to. And I want to be that type of person, you know what I'm saying? For my kid. Absolutely. But I will admit again, I struggled as a, as a single father because I thought that's all I needed to do was just give, give, give. And I mean, these days guys still playing video games. I don't play them, but they playing a video game, trying to do the, I mean, um, change the diaper, all that at the same time. Yep, I mean, yep. it, we, they just young, man. And, 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 I mean, you, we said 20, 20 and 21, but it's kids 17, 18 years oh, old. Oh yeah, they'll, they'll be live that on video are, games. With the that, you know, they thought I got to change the diaper that's real a quick. father or mother. <laughs> and, and that's tough. And without mother, grandfather, uncle, best friend, whoever, um, it's, it's, it's pretty tough. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Well, little fellas, I, I definitely appreciate, you know, your feedback on that. And I, again, you know, with this show, I want to definitely inform, you know, for young people that do watch the show, man, you see all these groups of guys that, you know, great advice accomplished. And, um, you know, all we're doing is here to uh, definitely share some knowledge and, you know, inform you on that. So, look, we'll be right back with our smooth club. Beard Care is the hottest new beard care in the market. With 16 amazing scented bombs and oils, you can choose which smell you want to try with our new sample bomb and oil set or use the mustache moisturizer and our new leave-in conditioner. Don't forget to add a wooden comb to glide through your beard without snag. Check out our website at ruggedevo.com or call for a private consultation 855-848-3029. And remember, Rugged is the new smooth. Welcome back to our smooth club. All right, fellas, change it up a little bit. Uh, Different age groups here. Um, We've all had different things in our life that have like maybe changed who we are. Maybe not some traumatic event or something big or small, but like what's like one thing that you could just say that like made you kind of look at life a little bit differently? Like personally for me, I definitely think traveling, uh, me and this guy, we went to Vietnam. He actually went twice and we went there for two weeks and there was just so many just eye-opening events, just funny stories, but just like just seeing how people live and like a whole different side of the world, just like I mean, you always see it on TV, but until you're there, and not just there for like a little bit, we were there for two weeks. Like two straight that weeks. was Good a gracious. long time, and it was fun. Like it definitely, like it taught me a lot, like just internally. Mm-hmm. So, what about you guys? Uh, I mean, it, I would say the exact same place. I mean, at the time, we um our uh, our school were doing a lot of um like a, a community, not community service trips, uh, mission trips. trips. And they always went to Nicaragua. They did that 24 seven and they started something new yeah, everybody going on. Um, they thought that was like a fun trip. They was, like, they was always going. Yeah, so they said, um, we're going to start one with Vietnam. And everybody was like, communists. <laughs> they, they were so, they were like, no, absolutely not. So the very first, uh, um, first time they did it, 
it was just eight of us, eight students. Uh, and it was not a mission trip. It was more like a community service trip because when we got there, we were helping make uh, build like this small dorm for um, uh, a village. They went to school, but they always used to like walk uh, miles to get to school. And, you know, they have lost some students because they said, look, we had a mudslide that, you know, students were. And it was like, wow. I'm, but, you know, you never realize like this is totally different from going to like a vacation or, you know, if you're going to enjoy yourself. When you actually see people in need from a different country, it, it blew my mind. And so for me, it just I mean, you know, I was I, my I was always raised, you know, just to, you know, be home, be for, be grateful for what you have. But until you see that, it's like, wow, this really like, you know, that, that I would say Vietnam was definitely the one because you see uh, the way people are living. And uh, and then, you know, we would be the first ones to complain about something. I'm like, you know, what? let me stop all that mess. Because yeah, yeah, there's yeah. people out there that don't, Doing you know, a lot exactly, worse, like, you know? like like what you're saying, you know, about the um the shoes. I mean, like, you know, I, I can be like, man, I got to have that Invicta watch. I got to have it. But mm-hmm. you know what? There's a family out there that might not have food on their, you know, plate or you know, food on their table or something like that. So it was. I would definitely say Vietnam. We stayed in Hanoi, Vietnam, which was like the city, and um, we stayed there for Sapa on the island. It, I mean, it was it was a beautiful place. I mean, I would love to go. Uh, love to go back. It was a, a beautiful place. Made some great people. Uh, the funny thing is, you don't see a lot of uh, black people there, so they just assume you had to be a star or yeah. you know somebody famous, and they would be waiting there like. And I'm like. I can kind of enjoy this a little, this a little <laughs> right. bit, but man, you walk out there, it's they're swarming. You can't, you can't walk, you know, anywhere. Get some so. money, some things like that. Oh yeah, tell you something. For me, it was definitely uh, martial arts as a teenager, mm. Mm. right? So when I was twelve, I got into martial arts. Actually, I kind of stumbled upon it because I grew up again, East Baltimore, um, but I went to a middle school that was outside of my district. Right? It's very district related. And one day when I was walking from middle school to the bus, I had like missed the bus. I saw this Kung Fu place. And so I go in, got information on it, you know, and I wind up taking Kung Fu. So like my very first job as a teenager, I was a martial arts instructor. I was a martial arts instructor at 15. Hmm. And, you know, I traveled to not Vietnam, but I traveled to San Francisco. I traveled to Orlando, Florida, for martial arts tournaments. Wow, wow. So I think definitely martial arts. I began learning Chinese. Um, I had a Chinese girlfriend, <laughs> when I was a um, but like that definitely opened me up to a whole nother culture, a whole nother way of life. And just thinking outside of Baltimore city. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why I ultimately joined the military. Cause I wanted to get out and see more of the world. You know, um, it definitely made me just not content with, you know, Baltimore city. I know a lot of people, you know, Virginia Kings Dominion was like the extent of their vacation. Yes. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, like for me, I wanted to see other countries. I wanted to see the world. And so if I had not got the exposure to martial arts, that exposure to a whole nother culture, um, I don't know where I would have been. You know, I may have just stayed home in Baltimore, got a job and kind of did what everybody else did. Wow. But it definitely made me want to get outside of my element and see more of the world that I wasn't you know, seeing in Baltimore. Wow. Wow. Well. Yeah, I mean, for me, man, I'm gonna be honest. It's, it was probably seven years ago, and that's when I hit rock bottom, right? So people look at me now as a successful businessman in the companies that I own. But when I was starting Diamond Sports Group, um, I had an event, and then I didn't have enough money to travel to the event, enough operating budget, nothing, right? But I, I had enough to send my people, and they were supposed to be at the event. And of course, we take money and we sell stuff and they were supposed to bring the money back, but they stole the money. Wow. Right. And so um, I went in a deep depression. Uh, I didn't have any more money. I was in the military, but I was getting a divorce. So that money was going crazy places. And I had a decision to make. You know, I was laying in the bed and I just was praying. And, and, I, and I said, God, you know, help me out because I really want to do this, but I don't know if I can. Mm-hmm. And and. You know, I went to bed, woke up the next day, and I felt different. Went in, went into my thing, saw my watches, went and pawned all my watches. Mm. Anything I could pawn, I pawned, right? Bracelets, anything I had of value, I went to the pawn shop, pawned it to get myself through the next couple of weeks to the next paycheck. And, t- and then I told everybody who was working for me, for the next three months, no one's getting paid. Either mm. you with me mm. or you're not, right? Mm. If, if you're going to be with me, I promise you after this three months, I'm going to pay everybody. If you're not, no hard feelings, walk away. Those that stayed, stayed. Those that left, left. Here we are today, multi-million dollar company. But that changed my life. And I look at life differently now. 
it also affects the way I trust people, mm -hmm. you know, with the money. Um, but I would say that was the turning point of my life because I could have went either way. I could just said, you know what, forget it, man. I'm just going to retire from the military and, and go get a GS job or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I stayed the path, man. So that was the biggest, I think, thing that really, for me, changed my life other than falling out. But I talked about that with the diabetes <laughs> yeah. thing. Um, and I'll talk about that on another episode probably. But those were the two things. But I would say I want to go back to that because I think a lot of people look at us as businessmen and think that we just poofed and we got it. It's, it's all easy. It's all, it's, it's all right. easy. And, and so like, yeah, now you see people want to, they want to have their own beer come. They want to be, they want to have Dr. Dan on the side. They want to sell teach. Whatever we do, the people think is that easy and mm -hmm. they don't know the struggle that it took to get there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, I was rock bottom. Man. I was done. I was <laughs> no money, no nothing, nobody to turn to, um, but God. So, yeah. I, and, uh, you know, I thank God that, that he, he took care of me and, 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 and the rest is history. Wow, that was awesome. awesome! Yeah, I know that was. was, 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 yeah, was crazy. You, you, you said it's okay to cry, right? You said yeah, it's okay to cry. Yeah, yeah, My yeah. goodness, that was, I mean, that was, that was needed though. That was that was. Yeah, good time. That's crazy. But um, all right, this is our smooth club. We'll take a quick break. Dapper Loop Collection is a full custom cloth air located in Virginia Beach. Our goal is to give you a full custom experience. Follow us and schedule your appointment at DapperLoop.com. Let us create your perfect custom look for your perfect wedding, prom, graduation, or anniversary. Right, welcome back to our smooth i'm your guy dapper luke all right so i want to bring in a, a topic that i think is kind of outside the spectrum of topics uh but i think it's really um one that hits home for me so i often hear the term toxic masculinity right people kind of throw it out there when they're talking about a man being overbearing or it leads towards um, him uh, disrespecting women or even abusive women because it is toxic he feels like he has to be a man but one term that you don't hear very often is you know toxic femininity or even toxic homosexuality. Um, an example that I can think of of toxic homosexuality is the WNBA, mm -hmm. right? Within the WNBA, they sometimes talk about women that have quit the WNBA because the homosexuality was so rampant in the locker room, they began to feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. right? So do y'all think that, you know, there is a such thing as like toxic homosexuality, you know, or even femininity, whereas people are pushing on their views and it makes them toxic around other people? Oh. <laughs> I, I mean, mean yeah, at this yeah. day and age, like, definitely. Like, yeah. Now the whole, like, Me Too and stuff, like, just the people on Twitter, like, I stay up on Twitter. People there say the wildest stuff. And, like, if you're gay, like, you say something, like, you can say the wildest thing that you want and nobody would even question it. Because you're gay. It's just this day and age. Like, I don't have anything wrong, obviously, with anybody being gay. But, like, the stuff that they say, it's like, if it was the opposite way around and it was, like, a male, like, there was no way they would cancel that man or whoever correct correct man. yeah and and just kind of going off of that right like you said if if a gay man starts hitting on or saying something about a straight man no one bats an eye right but if a straight man comments a woman or talks, oh why are you talking about her but but the gay guy can say whatever he wants about a guy and no one says anything you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying so again i'm not saying that it's right either one but you know why are we judging one we're not judging the other you know, or society just kind of accepts one, but doesn't accept the other. But I think, I, I mean, me personally, I don't want them hitting on me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You hit on somebody that's doing what you're doing, and then that's fine with you. But, you know, so I respect everyone the same. I don't, just because you're this way, I'm going to treat you one way. I treat everybody the same, or at least I try to, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was kind of different too, like in like what the NFL. Remember Michael was Michael Sam? I think mm -hmm. he was like the first. Well, she wasn't the. F I think they ended no, up he finding the first the product. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It was it was it's it was, it was gay, some other yeah. guy. Yeah, but when, I know. Did he Michael, ever make the NFL? Yeah, yeah. yeah. let me yeah. tell you something. Let me yeah. tell you something. That dude had like four games. Honestly, he 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 got drafted, which was 
he got drafted in like round 10 or 11. Round which, 20. Which, 20 which, which, round one that you never televised, right? But because it was a historic moment, they, you know, they had televised it. Um, he played. He got drafted by the Rams. Rams. Short time. I mm-hmm. think it was still preseason. Got cut. Went to Dallas. Got cut. And I think he he did a sh- very short stint in the um, the CFL. And it, I think he ended up uh, retiring. But um, mm-hmm. but uh, where was I going with that? No, he was. Um, as far as the accepted, it wasn't. It wasn't. I think as accepted in the NFL though. As far as what the you know, because guys are like saying. What's your thoughts? So if you if you uh, got to share a locker room with him, no, I don't know about that, man. And you know, people, you know, they got criticized for saying that. But I mean, again, I'm like, hey, that's what's you know, can't like dog him too much about it. But yeah, but he he definitely wasn't the only male that has ever played in the NFL that was gay. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 I it, think the the issue is openly gay. So now they were somebody going to see his, you know, what I'm saying he going to say something to them or whatever. That that guy ain't going to say it. I don't think he would have said. Yeah, that. I mean, he he's been yeah. in a locker room his whole life, and, right. and and like you said. Just because I don't openly say, hey, I'm gay, doesn't mean you're not gay. You're not looking at me a certain way, you know what I'm saying? Because I haven't openly said it. So, you know, the one thing with sexuality, you know, it's it's what you tell. If I can like you, I can be attracted to you and never tell you, you know what I'm saying? But what I choose to say, that's what makes the difference, you Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So just because Sam is not in the NFL doesn't mean there's no gay people in the NFL. There's Mm -hmm. just no one's ever talked about it in the NFL, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? So yeah, I doubt if anybody would ever be openly gay coming through the draft again because of what happened with him. I think most uh, scouts or whatever tell him will advise against it. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I mean, uh, because it's but not why is work. it even necessary? But you know I, what I'm saying? Why is it even necessary? That's and it's, cult, it's, it's that's some people that though. says that you know some some people would think he was blackballed because he came open. Yeah, absolutely was because I think he was. He was like defensive player of the year for he absolutely what, was. He play at Mizzou. What was it? Yes. SEC or he, he, was, he should have won in the first couple rounds. He went in the what? Whatever round. And he, he was, said, he, was yeah. he was a he was defensive end. I mean, hell, I mean, hella athlete. Again, he was defensive player of the year out of all those schools. And I mean, this man can't even make it through a, a preseason with two teams. I mean, it was definitely like, okay, what what's what's up? What's and up? then some some teams though, though, they don't want the plebis- that publicity absolutely, around their absolutely. team. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So that could have been another thing. Like, like they're going like to lose revenue from that? I, I, like, well, I mean, you know, the top billion dollar industry. You know look, look at Cap. I mean, you know, they, yeah. they never, if, if he would have said that earlier or late, you know, he still don't have a shot. So they would feel uncomfortable with other, you know, other people doing what he did. So again, with mm-hmm. like what mm-hmm. Michael Sam did. And, you know, and then on top of that too, when he got drafted, he it showed him celebrating it with his with his boyfriend. So you know he's embracing him and this and that, oh, all really the celebration. Really so yeah, yeah, I do remember that. He yeah, like, so because they had him. He, he wasn't at he wasn't at the like. He was at home. He, he was, was at home. home. He, he was, was at home. home. He, he was, was home. live yeah. broadcasting. Yeah, yeah. 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 When so, he got drafted, yeah. So he wasn't at like wherever they were having the draft. He was at home. And I mean, and, and again, it's it's not. And I mean, it, honestly, it's sad because again, I could care less what you are. You could do whatever you want. This man was a talented football player. Should have had, he should have had he more had opportunities than he absolutely. did. Absolutely, and, and there's no reason why he couldn't physically make it through a preseason. Absolutely, unless he got hurt, which he did not get hurt. Um, I mean, yeah. but 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 Greg Hardy can get like a multiple offers. Yeah, after and he's in there, you know. And even what was the one uh, incognito? He was choking folks and beating yeah, up folks. Yeah, and, and bu- bullied the other, the other he kid. Bullied, he bullied the one guy down in uh, Miami. Yep, and he um, got to finish out his career, retired yeah. with the Bills and stuff. So. And, you know, kind of flipping on that with with the toxic femininity, right? Mm -hmm. So one thing that I always hear, you know, is a woman telling a man, man up, man up, right? Why why is a woman allowed to say that to a man? Have you ever heard a man tell a woman, woman up? (laughs) Like, 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 what you trying to say? It's about that other chick, huh? It's about that. Other like, chick. I mean, it's just one of those things where you know, a woman. I I hate it when a woman tells a man to man up because you have no idea what it means to man. What is mm-hmm. manning up? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you would never hear a man go from like, you know, woman up, girl. Like, <laughs> you know, <but> I, <laughs> you need a woman up. You know, yeah, woman up. Go, go, go in the kitchen. Go in the kitchen and woman up. You know? <laughs> woman up. All right, all right. <laughs> like that's just something you don't hear, but women. Oh, Oh, to the woman like, up. you know, you need to band up, you need to toughen up, you soft, you know, and <laughs> oh, I don't think they should be doing that. Right. Absolutely not. So at the end of the day, you know, I just think that you should not push your sexuality or push your preference onto anybody. Mm-hmm. Let them be how they're going to be. And then let people be who you, you are, you are, let them be who they're going to be. And don't try to just put put your thing on anybody. Let them be. Mm-hmm. This is the R Smooth Club. We should all have the short break.
Check out What's Going On Wednesday, a weekly vlog with co-hosts Arrington Gavin and Jonathan Jones. Hear them speak on topics such as sports, men's health, business, current events, and so much more. You don't want to miss as they tackle a range of funny and serious topics. Catch them every Wednesday on YouTube at Rugged Evo TV. Rugged is the new smooth. All right, gents, so welcome back. I want to propose a toast. You know, like we said, we're all businessmen, all successful. Uh, so to more trials and tribulations, I think they are necessary to really help you grow and understand what you can do. So much success. Sure, sir. Here. <laughs>